Welcome to J-Hart Model Works. We're getting started on the 44 pickup by Ravel, and that means it's body time. Welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. First things first, we're going to drill out all the holes in the wheels, and there is a lot of them. And they should look something like that when we're done. Then we're going to cut off all the chrome parts and toss them into a container with some cheap concentrated store brand bleach. I figured I'd do this first to give them time to soak, but they were starting to strip as soon as they hit the bleach. We won't be using them though until later on in the build. Next, we want to find all the parts that will be getting painted body color. We're going to cut them off and clean them up with our 400 grit UMP thinny stick and thinny sponge sanders. There's not a lot of mold seams, but there are some. The cab has them on the front, as well as all the way around the top back. And the front fenders have them running across the front and around the headlight openings. With pretty much all of these being on curved surfaces, the UMP Thinny Sponge Sander will be doing most of the heavy work, as it will remove the mold seams without flattening the curves. With all the other parts, like the doors being separate, we don't have any panel lines to rescribe, but most of the parts have rough, sharp edges from the molding, and we want to smooth them down and clean them up. Don't get too aggressive and reshape anything. We just want to remove the sharp edge as paint sometimes pulls away from these sharp edges. The underside of the hood has some raised ejector pin marks. We'll remove most of them with a chisel and then sand them down smooth. A lot of other parts have these ejector pin marks in them as well. We're just going to clean everything up with some sanders just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth and ready for paint. The hood has this hinge part, which I drilled some 2mm holes in and glued in some magnets. And then on the underside of the hood, I added a couple of pieces of stainless steel. This will allow me to mount the hood, but take it off as I wish. All the parts got keyed with 1000 grit Tamiya sanding sponge and then a quick wash and some Dawn dish detergent to remove any dust or oils from handling. And now it's off to the spray booth for some primer. We'll be spraying three coats of Mr. Surfacer Black 1500, thin 2 to 1, thinner to paint with Mr. Leveling Thinner. This stuff goes down so ridiculously smooth. Now a couple of things to talk about real quick. First, I apologize in advance throughout most of this. My camera was zoomed way too far, and at times I will be completely out of frame, both here and at the bench, all the way through the video. Uh, two, in order to keep this video short, pretty much all the footage is sped up two to three times. So take your time. Don't rush through things just because it looks like I'm going fast in the video. I'm really not. It's just sped up to make it fit in a reasonable time frame. Also, if I sound a little, you know, down more than usual, 
Um, I have recent, just recently tested positive for COVID and I'm coughing a lot more. And I've actually injured a rib while coughing, so I'm in a little bit of pain too, so just bear with me. We gave it about an hour to dry so that we knew it would be safe to mask off. Uh, we've masked off the fenders and all the fenders are getting two coats of this Tamiya LP49 Pearl Clear. This is going to add a great deal of sparkle to the black base. It's going to turn it to an almost metallic flake graphite color. That looks fantastic. For the rest of the body parts, we'll be spraying two coats of Splash Paint Sparkle Candy Base. We want to spray this in nice, light, even coats. If you need to build it up in three, go ahead. We didn't need it on this build. Now that our base coats are down, we can go ahead and start applying some color. We're going to use Splash Paints Candy Green, and we're going to build it up again in light, even coats. Because the fenders are nearly black, they're only going to need about three coats. The rest of the body we're going to build up in about five.
We let that gas off for a couple of hours and before we can add the clear we need to add our gauge decal and do a little detail painting. This is likely to be the only decal I use off the entire decal sheet. We can use some good old micro set to set it in place. We'll then roll off any excess with a cotton bud. After that, we're going to hit it with some UMP normal decal solution and a hair dryer. And once that's done, we're going to repeat that again with the UMP strong. That was about all we needed to get the decal to conform really well. We're going to use our 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil and some Vallejo white to hit these tiny buttons on the dashboard. And we're going to follow that up with some Vallejo Silver for this button over here on the left side of the dash. Also going to use the silver to pick out the glove box knob and the Ford logo on the dash. That looks pretty darn good to me. Now it's time for some clear. Once again, we're going to be using Gravity Spain's 2K. They say to mix it three parts clear to one part hardener to one part thinner. I like to add just a little bit more thinner to help it flow. So I typically go with something closer to a three, one, almost one and a half. We want to start with one light mist coat, and then we're going to follow that up with a couple of wet coats. The clear was allowed to cure for three days and it's now safe to mask off and paint this trim that runs down the center of the hood. We're going to start with some Mr. Surfacer Black again and just put down a nice light smooth coat before following it up with some Alclad Copper. Now sadly this is almost entirely out of frame. I salvaged as much footage as I could. Finally, we'll peel off the masking. When you do this, you want to pull the tape back over itself and pull away from the line at a 45 degree angle. That is looking great. Now we've messed off the bed and we're going to paint the bed to look like wood. We're going to start by painting the whole bed surface and Tamiya's NATO brown. This is a fairly long process. I've shown it before in the 41 Chevy, but it's a nice process to cover again. Back at the bench, we're going to use some Tamiya Deck Tan, Medium Brown, and Brown JGSDF 
to create our wood texture. So starting with the deck tan, we want to use our old frayed wide bristle brush, dip it in the paint, then brush a lot of it off on a paper towel. We don't quite want to remove all of it like a dry brush, but we want to leave just a little wet on there. We're going to make long, straight brush strokes. We don't want full coverage. We want it to be streaked. Now, if you do get some solid chunks, that's okay. We can break that up with our next colors. Moving on to the flat brown, we're going to repeat the process. We again want it streaky and try to break up any solid splotches of the deck tan. Finally, we're going to add the JGSDF brown as a third layer of streaking, using the same process again, just breaking up any clumps in the flat brown and just adding some more texture. Now, I know it's not looking great yet. Just bear with me. This is a process and it doesn't come together until the very end. Now it's back to the spray booth. We're going to take the NATO brown and we're going to add a few roundish, ovalish type shapes. These are going to form the base of our knots. We're just going to randomly place three or four around the bed. Next, rather than switching out to a .2 needle, we're going to cheat and use this black sharpie to add some smaller circles in the center of the knots. Try and stretch them a little to make them similar in shape to the brown spots if you can. I know it looks a little jarring right now, but we're going to blend it in here in a second. With our black circles down, we're going to take some Tamiya Clear Red and we're going to spray it over the entire knots going a little bit past the edges. Then we're going to just wander around the surface fairly randomly, but don't cover the whole bed. We just want to break everything up a bit with this clear red. And the final step of this process is to spray the whole bed in a couple of light coats of Tamiya Clear Yellow. You can also use clear orange for this, or even mix the two. Now this will leave us with a somewhat glossy finish. If you want that kind of look, then go ahead and stop here. But I'm going to go ahead and hit this whole thing with some TS-80 flat clear to flatten it all down. We let that sit for a few hours to cure and then we masked off the wood leaving just the metal trim pieces. We're going to hit these with a light coat of Mr. Surfacer Black and we're going to follow that up again with some Alclad Copper. We're back at the bench and we're not quite done yet. I picked up some metallic sharpie markers and we're going to use the metallic brown marker to hit these bolts. There are three on each side of the bed and I think this is a really good match for the outclad copper.
And there we go. I really like the way the bed turned out. Here we have just a loose taped together dry fit to give you an idea of where we're going with this build. I'm not super happy with the fitment on these rear fenders. There aren't really any positive locating points. It's just going to be kind of glue it in and press it in place and hope you get it right. It should be close to about there. I'm really liking the contrast between the dark green fenders and the candy green body. I think that pearl clear sparkle really helps bring some life to the fenders. We have our bed back here that blends in nicely and everything's looking good. There's still a good bit of work to do. There's a good deal of dust to sand and polish out of the clear. Welcome to Texas, dust is inevitable. That'll get knocked out off camera. And so from here, I think we're gonna move on to the engine, chassis, and suspension. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll catch you guys on the next one. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comments section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comments section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.